What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this one, we'll be optimizing Modern Warfare 2, DMZ2, all of that for Season 2. It just released today. This video will show you how to get the best possible performance out of the game while keeping it looking really sharp and keeping visibility high. I won't dive too much into detail in this video. Instead, you'll find a link in the description down below to my previous video if you'd like more information on what I'm choosing and why. Also in this video, I won't be diving into the Windows optimization. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find the Windows 10, 11 and Nvidia optimization guides, as well as anything else that relates to this video that'll help you get better performance from your PC. Obviously have as much closed in the background as possible while you're playing the game. And without further ado, let's continue. Whenever you fire up the game, if you see something about shader optimization at the top, make sure you wait for that to finish before you try and load into a game, you'll get much better performance. To begin the optimization in the top right, we'll head to settings, then we'll head across to graphics. At the very top, change to display and under display here, we'll start with display mode. You should set this to full screen exclusive unless you're trying to do something funky like I am. Recording a 16x9 video on an ultra wide, I need to play in full screen borderless for it to fit properly into YouTube. You'll usually get better performance with full screen exclusive, but if you prefer borderless, you can choose that of course. Display adapter should be your high performance GPU. If you're on a gaming laptop, you'll probably need to select your high performance one if you have two of them in your PC, one that's baked into your processor. Then refresh rate, you can leave it auto, otherwise set it to a compatible refresh rate of your monitor. And the same goes for display resolution. This should match your display resolution of your monitor or otherwise be a compatible one. Don't push it higher than your actual resolution, otherwise things may not display properly or at all. And of course, if you're pushing out more pixels than you can actually see, you're just wasting extra performance. So if you've got a 2K monitor, set this to 2K and leave it there. Dynamic resolution, I'd recommend having this off, otherwise you'll notice drastic changes in quality while you're playing the game when the FPS drops a little bit. I'd prefer a little bit of hitching and FPS drops instead of losing practically all of the visual fidelity while the game claws at every last resource trying to make it look a bit better. Aspect ratio, your preference. Both of these V-Syncs should be set to off unless you're getting screen tearing. Custom frame rate limit, this is up to you. I usually play at 60 as playing with anything higher than that eats my entire GPU and oftentimes leaves OBS and things like that lagging too much. Otherwise, you can push it all the way to the right and leave it at practically uncapped. Also, in South Africa, power is an issue. Putting an FPS cap on can help your PC use less power. Menu frame rate limit, your preference. I have this a little bit lower. And out of focus, custom frame rate limit. I'd absolutely recommend having this as low as possible if you're someone who tabs out and multitasks. If you're video editing and stuff like this, this is absolutely crucial to have it on five. That way, when you tab out, you'll have practically your whole PC power ready for you. Tab back in and all of the performance will be given back to the game. At the bottom here, we have some other user preference things such as gamma, brightness, constrained mouse to game window. This is useful if you spin around and click. If you click out of the game, turn this on, it'll stop that from happening. Shader optimization, you can run this again, and I'd recommend you do run this again after changing tons of settings. So when you're done, return here and click this. HDR is your preference. If it's supported, turn it on and brightness will be a lot better depending on what kind of monitor you have. You may not like this effect, so this is your preference. It'll have barely any FPS impact. On the quality section, we have quality presets at the very top. If you hover over any of these, you'll see the amount of VRAM that it takes in the bottom right. Minimum starts at two gigs of VRAM and ultra goes all the way up to almost four gigs of VRAM. I'd recommend you keep this at basic and work your way down or up. That's the best place to start. Then render resolution should match your display. You can lower this here, but you'll notice a noticeably blurrier game. Preferably, you should use upscaling or sharpening down here. I'd recommend using either NVIDIA DLSS for NVIDIA cards, AMD FSR, and if you'd like to try the experimental Intel XCSS, especially if you have an Intel GPU, you can do that as well. So NVIDIA, use NVIDIA DLSS, Otherwise, try using AMD FSR. When you choose one of these, it'll lower the resolution of your game and use AI to magically raise it back up. The higher performance you set this to, the more visual artifacts you'll see as it's lowering the resolution a lot and raising it all the way back up using AI magic. Then sharpness I'd recommend having at somewhere between 30 and 50%. Here it seems to start at 50. AMD FSR, I think it starts a little bit lower. No, nope, you can't even change it there. Never mind. So either DLSS, AMD FSR or off. 
Anti-aliasing I'd recommend having to SMAA T2X, though this is as low as we can go. We can't turn it off completely. What we can do instead is lower the quality here to low. When you do so, you'll notice a good improvement in FPS. However, you'll notice a lot more jagged edges around objects. If this distracts you, you can raise it and sacrifice a few FPS, but I'd recommend just using DLSS or FSR on quality. That way you'll gain FPS and you'll also get rid of jagged edges. Then video memory scale, set this up if you have a ton of VRAM available. Otherwise, if you're really struggling for VRAM, leave it at the default of 70, I think it is, but you can lower this if your VRAM is maxing out, causing you to hemorrhage FPS in game, hitches, etc. Scrolling down to details and textures, for the most part, if you're playing Warzone mainly instead of Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer, you'll usually want to set these VRAM options one lower than you would on multiplayer, as there will be a ton more loaded in in Warzone 2, a huge open world map. The very top one, render resolution, should be set based on the amount of VRAM in your PC. Hovering over these options will give you a preview in the bottom right of what you can select. For the most part, select whatever matches your GPU. Having this too high will cause huge FPS drops. However, setting this too low will have practically no FPS gain. So it's worthwhile cranking it up for a much better looking game, especially when it comes at practically no cost. On Warzone, you'll want to have this usually one lower than before, as there's once again more things being loaded in at once. I play on low, even though this isn't really something that's necessary. That's just what I've played on, as I play a ton of DMZ and Warzone. Anisotropic filtering should have almost no impact on FPS. I'll usually leave this on normal or high. Nearby LOD and distant LOD is how good models are when they're close to you or further away. I'd recommend distant ones being set to low and nearby being set to high, but this is your preference. If you find FPS drops or you're playing on a slow hard drive, you may want to set both of these to low. That way you're not loading in two copies of the same object, one at a higher resolution than the other. Clutter draw distance. I'd recommend keeping this short. You don't really need to care about small ground elements. Particle quality. This is your preference. If you find yourself losing FPS whenever things like this are happening, explosions, other particle effects, crank this down to low. Otherwise, leave it where it is. Personally, I don't see too much of a difference between these two options. Particle quantity level. I usually leave on very low or low, that way we don't sacrifice performance for flashy little effects that appear and disappear with practically no actual gameplay effect. Bullet impacts and persistent damage layers, I usually leave both of these on as it really adds to the gameplay experience and you can tell what happened where a little bit easier as long as it happens within render distance. Then shader quality, I usually leave on high, but this does have some GPU impact. You can lower this to medium or low. Tessellation has a very slight impact on how things look. You can notice mainly on these rocks here. Here it's flat on the left with this off and on the right, you see this bumpy texture on it. It really adds not that much to the game, but of course it does have a little bit of an impact on how your PC performs. You can leave this on near or off, I'd recommend. Terrain memory, once again, this has to do with VRAM, though hovering over these doesn't really have an effect on the preview of VRAM. I usually leave this on max. I haven't seen any FPS drops, but you can lower this to medium or even min if you play a ton of Warzone and DMZ and you find that you lose more FPS there than you do on multiplayer maps that are smaller, raids, etc. On-demand texture streaming, I'd absolutely recommend having this off. It'll save you hard drive space, save you internet cap if that's something you need to worry about, and it won't be trying to download and load things while you're playing a competitive game. Streaming quality only affects the option up here, so I've skipped this entirely as I have it off. Volumetric quality, this has to do with lighting. I see barely any difference between low and high. I'd recommend leaving this on low. Deferred physics quality, I have this set to off. This has an effect with the physics quality of water and water caustics as well. This has to do with light rays and light waves that produce at the bottom of the ocean. Once again, in a Twitch shooter, you're not gonna be staring at the bottom of the ocean. I'd recommend having this off. Then shadow and lighting. Shadow map resolution has to do with the quality of shadows. On the left, you can see it's blurry and sometimes blocky. On the right, it's nice and straight. On a higher end graphics card, you can comfortably leave this on high or even extra with barely any FPS impact. Otherwise, you can leave it on normal or lower it down. I leave it on extra, if not high. I think high is good enough. Extra is probably overkill. Screen space shadows. 
This shouldn't have too much of an impact on performance as this is an ancient technology. I'd usually leave this on low instead of off. Spot shadow quality, low once again. Spot cache, I'll leave on high, but it does have a huge effect on VRAM. If you're struggling with VRAM, you can lower this comfortably to medium or even low, but the higher that you have this, the less you'll need to reload spot shadows for different areas. So it's a good idea to have it a bit higher than on the lower end, as it should help prevent hitching and weird FPS drops while you're playing the game. Particle lighting, once again, barely any impact on gameplay, but it does have an FPS impact. I'd recommend leaving this on normal or low. Ambient occlusion, this has an effect to do with lighting and either can be your preference. Preferably, I'd leave this on off or static objects only. That way, you'll see people a bit better when objects are more evenly lit like this. If you prefer having this huge contrast difference between light and dark areas, you can leave it on static or even dynamic. Having this off, I would think gives you better visibility while you're playing the game. Then screen space reflections. This isn't RTX. This is just normal reflections. They're really cheap to calculate an ancient technology. So normal is good enough, you don't really need to turn this off unless you're clawing for every bit of FPS. Static reflection quality I have on low and weather grid volumes on low over here. These two options have very little impact on gameplay and you can leave them comfortably down low. Then post-processing effects at the very bottom, NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, have this on to get better input latency while you're playing the game. And if you're CPU bound, have this set to on plus boost. Depth of field, world motion blur, weapon motion blur, and film grain have these all set to off and zero. That way you'll have much better visibility when you're playing the game. Now we'll apply changes and head across to view. Field of view can cost you FPS and it can save you FPS in other ways. I'd absolutely recommend having this set to what you're comfortable with over what kind of FPS you'll be getting. You'll get a much better experience even if you do lose a few FPS if it matches what you want. ADS field of view, this is once again also your preference. If you have it set to independent, your zoom won't change when you're zooming in and out. And if you find that you drop FPS when scoping in, you probably have this on affected and it's causing something weird to happen on your PC. Set this to independent and you'll lose that FPS drop whenever you scope in and scope out. Weapon field of view, your preference. This is just how far your arm out. This is just how far your arm is out. Third person field of view, once again your preference. I don't play third person, so I don't really know too much about this option. And finally, vehicle field of view, default is good enough, but this is your preference. Having it set too wide usually helps you see a bit more about what's going on around you though. Then camera, this is all your preference as well. Now on the keyboard and mouse section at the very bottom here, you have mouse calibration. You can get super nerdy about acceleration, filtering, smoothing, wheel delay, etc. There's tons that you can do here that wasn't pretty previously in the game, especially when I did my previous video, I'm pretty sure. Audio, I'd recommend having this set to what you actually have, either headphones or PC if you're using normal speakers. This all has to do with dynamic range. The higher the dynamic range, the bigger the difference between soft and loud noises. So on high, you'll easily hear loud explosions, but footsteps will fade into the distance. PC and headphones will let you hear footsteps much easier, so I'd definitely recommend having either of these selected. In fact, I think I'll push to PC just so I can hear things a bit better. Then under voice chat, scrolling down a little bit, this is your preference. This all has to do with how you like playing the game. If you find voice chat is super distracting, just turn it off here, especially proximity chat. At the very bottom, you have some accessibility settings. These are your preference if you need any of them. Anyways, with that comes the end of this optimization guide. I'll be diving into DMZ on the new map to see what we can do. And of course, you can keep your eyes open on my second channel if you're following and like key guides, etc. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Mine has been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.